At the start of every summer, like all good Danes, Anders Pepper Müller drives out to the countryside. He always visits the same place, the tiny village of Kraghere in northern Jutland, where researchers have been studying birds for decades. But over those decades, something has changed. In 1997, when Müller reached his destination, he would have to wipe a layer of dead insects off his windshield. Today, not so much. And while this might sound like good news for motorists, it's very, very bad news for humankind. You're listening to Loud Numbers, a data sonification podcast. I'm Miriam Quick, and my co-host Duncan Gear and I have put together a collection of stories made from data and sound. Each episode, we'll explore a new story through data by creating a piece of music from it. This week, the end of the road. In 1997, Muller started collecting data on exactly how many small and large insects hit his windshield as he drove down the same two stretches of road. He drove those roads 1,355 times between 1997 and 2017, and each time he made a careful note of the date, the time of day, wind speed, cloud cover, rainfall and temperature, as well as the make and model of the rental car he was driving. In 2019, Muller published his findings in a peer-reviewed research paper. Its title only gives a hint of its terrifying contents. It's called Parallel Declines in Abundance of Insects and Insectivorous Birds in Denmark Over 22 Years. But when you read that paper, a story unfolds of mass murder on a scale that's almost unthinkable. At the first study site, for every 100 insects that were alive in 1997, just 20 remain. At the other site, just three out of every hundred remain. That's after controlling for factors like date, weather and time of day. Most naturalists who are out in nature have seen this coming over a long time, Muller told The Guardian when it covered his research in early 2020. He said, My colleagues remember going on summer holidays as children, and their parents had to stop their car to clean the windscreen so they could continue. This is certainly not a problem anymore. But it is a problem for the species that feed on those insects, like birds, fish and mammals, and the species that feed on those species, and so on all the way up through the food web. The insect apocalypse could have huge repercussions for human civilization as they stop doing the things we depend on them for, like pollination of plants, dispersal of seeds, decomposition of dead things, essentially keeping our ecosystems functioning. So why is this happening? What could be killing so many insects in such a short space of time? Well, it won't surprise you to learn that the answer is humans. But beyond that, it gets a bit complicated. Destruction of habitat has been suggested as a key cause, but Muller says that the study area hasn't really changed in the last 20 years. It's a regular slice of European countryside with scattered farms and houses, separated by fields, meadows, hedges, ponds and streams. You'd imagine that if insects were thriving anywhere, it would be here. Others have suggested climate change, and Muller says this is definitely playing a role. Temperature and rainfall have both risen substantially in the study area over the past decades, making it harder for native species to survive and easier for new predators to move in. But even when you use statistical methods to control for the effects of climate change in the population models, the number of insects still falls by half. New pesticides are undoubtedly playing a major role too, as we use chemicals to boost harvests in the short term, ignoring the longer term effects on the insects that pollinate those plants. Even light pollution is a factor, as insects are lured to artificial lights where they either fry against the bulbs, get caught by predators lurking where they can be sure of a good meal, or get slammed against oncoming headlights and windshields, of course. It wasn't easy to figure out how to sonify this data in a way that's tonally appropriate for what is essentially a mass murder. In the end, we settled on just three very simple layers of sonification, including the time axis. The data is very detailed. In some cases, there are several data points on each day. So to reduce the noisiness and bring out the signal, we chose to average the data out by month. There are about four months worth of data per year, covering late spring and summer, and each new year, is marked by the sound of a tolling funeral bell. 
Each month lasts a bar, which is about three seconds, and the average number of insects splattered onto Muller's car during that time is represented by the number of these fluttering synth sounds. Higher sounds represent smaller insects, while lower sounds correspond to larger insects. As the number of insects falls, the sounds fall silent. There's also a synth pad with a falling melody. The notes are based on the estimated 1.1% per year decline in land-based insect populations across the whole globe, not just two roads in Denmark. Every time insect numbers fall 5%, the melody drops down a note. You'll hear a bass line pushing the track forward. There's no data in this, but 13th century music nerds and movie fans might recognise a reference to the funereal Dies Irae sequence, which is commonly used in classical requiems and scary films. Finally, we've added a few ambient sound effects to the music. Cars zooming past, birds singing, that kind of thing. We wanted to give the feeling of driving on a distant highway through a vast landscape, which is getting more and more desolate as time goes by. That's it. You're ready to hear the whole thing. This is The End of the Road.
This sonification was created by Miriam Quick and Duncan Gear. To make it, we use Google Sheets to wrangle the data, Sonic Pi to turn it into music, and Logic Pro X to turn that music into a track. You can find all the numbers we used to create the track in the show notes, and a final version without our commentary on all good streaming services. Search for loud numbers. Thanks to the Sonic Pi community for building a fantastic sonification tool, and to Queer Ear for mastering the track. And thank you to all of the researchers, including Muller, who are working on gathering better data on this vital issue and publishing it openly on the web. We couldn't have made this podcast without you. This is the final episode of the first season of Loud Numbers. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review or tell a friend. Thanks for listening.